First of all, I want to say how happy I am to be here. Um, I'm very, very comfortable. I look out and see so many familiar faces. Um, I won't say that I'm, I'm more comfortable here than in the House of Commons, although it may very well be true, uh, although that doesn't mean, Howard, that you can heckle, so, so no, no heckling allowed. Uh, I want to say thanks to the, the conference organizers. Uh, it's great to be back at the University of Ottawa. My, my love for this place has been uh, public and abiding, and it still is. And I think it's a great law faculty, and it continues, uh, continues to get better. So, so congratulations. Thank you to Teresa Scassa in particular. Um, it was 30 years ago in the summer of 1987 uh, that, that uh, some 88 actually, 88? that we had a wonderful summer together uh, working uh, for the late Rod McDonald. Um, and I think it's, uh, it's fun that we got to work on uh, one of the articles that people consider to be iconic for Rod, Office Politics. And uh, what, a, what a wonderful memory of that, uh, of that uh, and, and uh, Trace's friendship over the years. It's also fantastic uh, to be able to follow all of you uh, who have spoken today, my, my, my friends and colleagues, and in particular David Vaver. Um, nobody has uh, defined the Canadian or international landscape, but, but certainly the Canadian landscape more than David has over the course of his career teaching, starting to teach intellectual property when, as, as an academic subject in Canada when nobody else was, uh, and, and having had an impact on all of us as teachers, uh, and then everyone else, uh, and in particular uh, policymakers, at, uh, in the government, but also policymakers at the Supreme Court of Canada. And, and it's fair to say, I use fair in brackets, uh, it is fair to say that when we think fair, we think, we think David Vaver, and, and it's, it's honestly an honor uh, to be able to, to speak at the same conference as you. Um, apologies for not being here earlier. Uh, I was trying to follow on Twitter. Uh, so thanks, uh, thanks to those of you that were posting uh, during the course of the day on Twitter with the hashtag. Um, the whip gets to control my life now. Um, I can only come and go when the whip lets me come and go. And because I had uh, duties in the house today, uh, I couldn't be with you for the conference. But it sounds, from what I've read on Twitter, uh, it sounds like you've had some great discussions. Um, my trademarks are a bit rusty, uh, so I apologize in advance. Uh, I miss it. I miss the discussion I just witnessed. Uh, it was, was fantastic. I, I, I leaned over uh, to Megan Buttle, who was here with me, and I said, the beauty of trademarks is there's always a good example <laughs> at hand, and, and there's always something that's happened that you've read in the paper uh, that, that uh, immediately clicks with, uh, with the people in the audience. Um, forgive me as well, last apology, forgive me as well if I mess up we and you. Um, I'm going to say we, and sometimes I'm going to mean us, because this is the life I lived for the past uh, 25 years. And sometimes I'm going to mean we as the government. And I may ask you to distinguish according to context. And if you're, and if you're unclear, if I say we, who I mean, stop me and say, who do you mean? Uh, because I, I may have to think through that myself. Um, so. I have three basic points today uh, talking about, about uh, trademarks and innovating trademarks. Um, first is, we get it, we being the government. Um, we get it that there needs to be reform. We understand the importance and we are listening. So that's, that's the general theme in terms of innovating trademarks. And there are three sub points. The first is IP reform is on the agenda uh, of the government. The second is that innovation is on the agenda of the government, and there is, uh, there is a complex relationship between those two, IP and innovation. And the third point, I hope, is, is, is the obvious one moving forward, which is you all have a role to play in all of this. So first of all, uh, IP reform. Of course, copyright, we're, we're required by statute. You know that the, the, the statute passed in 2012 has a five-year uh, period in which we have to undertake a review. Uh, so we are, uh, we are undertaking that review. So copyright reform is on the agenda for, for statutory reasons. And patent as well, uh, in part because of the CETA uh, uh, agreement, which I spent much of the first year of my parliamentary life on. Um, and, and uh, other treaties uh, require us to be looking at, uh, looking at patent reform. 
but also trademark. And for the right reasons, if you will, in the sense that you all know, you've all discussed today, trademarks are important for a variety of different social and economic reasons. Um, who won't say to any company of whatever size, from the smallest to the very biggest, that branding isn't important. Uh, there's a fair bit of branding going on in this room right now, if I, if I read a number of your tweets. It is, uh, so trademarks are important in branding, but trademarks are important economically, and trademarks have a role socially, as we, as we just saw in, in, in the previous discussion. Um, so we do, need, we do need to continue to think as trademarks evolve and as the use of trademarks evolve, we need, we now I'm saying we as a government, but also we as a group of academics thinking about trademarks in the room, we have to think about how we would change it, how we would make it better. Of course, Canada has signed a number of international treaties that you, that you know about, some of you teach, uh, that require us uh, to harmonize our laws with the obligations that we've undertaken internationally. Uh, what we've also included things, such as geographical indications uh, in CETA, where we need to also be uh, thinking about the impact that that has on Canada economically and socially. Small aside, as a member of the Italian di diaspora in Canada, I understand that GIs have an impact on my family's ability or my so extended cousin's ability to call what we're making in the basement what we call it because perhaps we can't anymore. So there's a, there's a, there's an there are a number of different social implications that GIs might have on, on Italian Canadians say in, when they're curing their, their ham in the basement as my mother used to do. Um, we have to facilitate uh, as a practical matter uh, registration of trademarks internationally because that's what we've obliged ourselves to do. Uh, we want to reduce the paper burden but there are also larger uh, technical and theoretical questions that we need to answer when we modernize uh, our trademark law. So that requires looking at laws. I saw, I saw a tweet on, on something that uh, Professor Weber presented this morning on section 17 on how he would rewrite that section. We need that kind of, uh, we need that kind of advice in, in terms of rewriting uh, what we do. Um, we also need to think about institutions. So we need to think about CEPO. And, and what roles CEPO currently plays and what roles CEPO could play uh, in terms of making uh, our trademark system, our patent system, our copyright system better uh, across the board. Um, finally, with, with, respect, uh, with respect to the particularity of, of trademark agents uh, and patent agents, uh, we have taken some steps uh, in, again, I put it in quotes, modernizing in terms of in terms of making those discussions privileged, but there's a lot more that, that needs to be done in the, uh, in the uh, governance, if you will, of, of, of patent and trademark agents that we need to think about. Find it interesting that in all of this, we need to think about conceptual coherence uh, of the institution of trademark itself, and, and here is, is a place where you hopefully will help us. Um, we, we need some kind of coherence across trademark and I, I, across all of IP, and I know that point has been made in the conference, that we need to be thinking about balance when we think about trademark. Now we, we're, I think, in this room, again, thanks to, thanks to David Weber in particular, used to thinking about copyright in terms of balance, uh, in terms of balance between uh, what copyright right holders have and what copyright users have, the users' rights that they have. Uh, the Supreme Court uh, has uh, helped us along the way, uh, again, thanks to Professor Weber, and, and the 2012 statute explicitly does that, or attempts that balancing, not necessarily perfectly, but, but does attempt to do that. And perhaps we need to be thinking about balance and in trademark as well. We go back to that, that very famous article by Jessica Littman entitled Breakfast with Batman, where we do talk about users' rights in the, in the trademark setting, and, and perhaps that kind of balancing 
uh, is something that we need to be thinking about in the, in the current governance context. The previous discussion that I walked in on uh, certainly had that in mind when you were thinking about the various kinds of legitimate uses that one could make uh, as a user, as a critic, as a, as a, as a consumer rights advocate or whatever of a, of a trademark. Um, so again, it's good that you're meeting and, and discussing these things, and, and I hope that some of the fruits of what you will discuss uh, will be brought forward. But, but my point is that as trademarks increase in their importance and as they increase in their pervasiveness, as they become second nature to us because of the way virtually everything gets branded today, we, we will need to find ways, as we do in other areas of intellectual property, to keep them in balance. So I would say to you on the substantive point, be active in your thinking, be active in your scholarship, uh, be active in your ideas, both in general terms, general conceptual terms, but also specific points such as Section 17 of the Trademarks Act. Uh, if you can figure out Section 22, uh, please, uh, by all means, do so. Um, I struggled with Section 22, and I struggled with the Veuve Clicquot decision with, with successive uh, iterations of students uh, with that sort of half-written paper that, that never saw the light of day, trying to figure out if dilution did any work that confusion didn't do. Um, and at a certain point, the best I could do was, you know, borrowing from the U.S. Supreme Court, uh, was say, well, I know it if I, can, I, know it if I see it, uh, but without any, without, without any way of explaining it. And, and that may be indicative of the fact that perhaps it doesn't do any work uh, that confusion doesn't already do, but I'll leave that, I'm not speaking for the government here, I'll leave that for you to try to elaborate and help us with respect to, to trying to understand uh, dilution. That was meant to be funny, so that, that joke completely fell flat, but anyway, there we are. Um, the, the second major uh, series of reflections that I wanted uh, you to think about is innovation. Donc, comme gouvernement, on a bien compris que l'innovation est très importante. Et comme gouvernement, il faut uh, développer une stratégie pour améliorer euh, l'innovation au pays. Euh, C'est quelque chose pour lequel on avait critiqué euh, l'ancien gouvernement, euh, évidemment pour des, 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 des fins, des fins euh, euh, politiques, si vous voulez, des fins légitimes, mais politiques. Euh, et on a compris que l'innovation fait, euh, fait partie intégrante de notre économie. Nous sommes un pays qui, qui est assez, euh, assez petit à l'échelle internationale. 35 millions de euh, personnes à côté d'un autre pays qui est 10 fois euh, plus en termes de, de population. Et on, il faut qu'on participe dans l'économie internationale pour euh, créer euh, des emplois. And something that I'm sensitive to, I've now become very sensitive to as a, as a person in public life, is that we need to pay attention to the economy, um, as well as other things, but, but the ability for people to work and make a living is critical. And, and uh, innovation, because of the size of our country, because of its situation in the world, uh, is an important part of our ability to participate in the world economy, and an important part of our ability, now as a government, to help uh, people find ways to make a living. And so we're investing a great deal in innovation. We've rolled it out in the 2017 budget and to some extent in the budget uh, precedent where we're, we're investing in uh, interesting technologies like artificial intelligence. Uh, we are hoping to invest in a number of different areas uh, through spending in what we're calling super clusters, um, and they might be in areas such as the digital economy or in clean tech or green tech. We're going to allow people to try to define their projects across Canada and then, and then see what happens. Um, we're paying attention to certain critical sectors where we feel Canada has done well historically, and we, we feel we might be able to uh, 
incent winners uh, in those various areas. And we're putting money into what we're calling a strategic innovation fund, uh, where again, we're going to try to bet on winners uh, across Canada in order to, to foster uh, innovation. For those of you in this room, uh, we increased in the 2016 budget base research money, which was pretty critical. So SHRC and CERC, uh, the, the third funding agency whose name always escapes me, um, all, had their, all had their budgets increased and we hope to maintain that uh, moving forward because base research is critical. And we're gonna try to spend money on training. Uh, training kids, uh, coding for kids, training people along the way who are in transition with respect to their jobs. So that's the blatantly political pitch, but it's an explanation about the, the, the innovation agenda that we're putting forward and, and why we think it's important. Now, there's a link between innovation and IP, and it's a, it's a complex uh, link. Uh, I think it is fair to say that our country needs an innovation strategy, that's what we're trying to provide, and I think our country needs an IP, an IP strategy, which we're also trying to provide, um, and that there is some link between um, having a good IP strategy that will be successful in terms of innovation. Now, it's not always a one-to-one -one mapping. You've heard the rhetoric, I've heard the rhetoric. It's not always the case that IP leads to more innovation. In fact, it can be the opposite. Uh, we've seen that empirically. So again, it's a question of mix, and it's a question of balance, uh, where we're using, uh, where companies at an individual level, at a micro level, are choosing an IP strategy that might mean patent, uh, it might mean confidential information, it might mean open innovation, uh, depending on the context, in order to facilitate their business interests, and then also using trademarks um, off to perhaps a, a different conceptual side in, in terms of their branding, in terms of their marketing, in order to advance their, 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 their product or service around the world. We need, again, question of balance. IP can help innovation. IP can also impede innovation. And we have to be attentive to the context in which uh, all of this uh, can happen. Um, we need to educate, as a government, people about the options, companies about the options that they may have, or others about the options that they may have as regards uh, the choice of an IP strategy. Again, which might include open innovation, or might include patent, or might include trademark. You in the university have a responsibility to help with respect to IP uh, education, both in terms of the teaching that you do with respect to your students, your graduate students, but also uh, with respect to the, the, the writing and your the writing that you do, the publishing that you do in scholarly journals, the research that you do, as well as your participation uh, in public discourse as public intellectuals. And once again, there are some I don't need to repeat that in this institution where I think the, 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 the engagement of, of law professors as public intellectuals in the IP space has been fantastic. Um, and other organizations that, that work in the IP space. All of these institutions need to work together to help Canadians, so help us, in this case I'll say us as Canadians, um, elaborate, refine, and promote uh, a series of, of intellectual property policies that includes trademark, that helps us push forward, and that helps us push forward an innovation agenda where I hope that we can make uh, life better on a daily basis uh, for the average Canadian. Finally, and I'll, and I'll finish on this point, the time to do this is now. Time to do this is now. Uh, we as a government are engaged in a dialogue. Uh, we as a government are listening, uh, considering, and this is the time for you to get your uh, ideas out into the public space or out in front of uh, the, the various uh, departments and ministries that will be part of this decision-making process. Um, we might not uh, agree on everything, but as someone that I uh, know and respect has said, uh, better is always possible. 
And so I hope, uh, I hope that we can make trademark law better based on your deliberations today, as I hope we can make copyright, patent, uh, and other areas of law better by the kinds of deli deliberations that are always uh, ongoing. Let me finish on a personal note. I miss the Academy. Uh, I miss all of you. Not so much Pierre Moise, but, but, uh, and Richard Gould, but all, all of the rest of you. I'm just kidding. I, I can, uh, Pierre is not here today. I think he'll be here tomorrow, but he will, uh, he will vouch for this. As much as I miss all of you and working with you, uh, I'm having a blast. And I'm happy to be in government where I am right now at this particular juncture because it's a good time to be there. And so... I'm going to challenge you to participate in this process by getting your thoughts out there about how we can make the trademark system an outstanding trademark system, as well as copyright patent and anything else that, that you think uh, I might want to uh, consider. So by all means, let's get to work. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. It's been an honor to be here. <laughs>